So I want to do one last video here with the skeletonized 3D fully printed Jawball Blaster. As you can see, it's not completed, but I kind of wanted to at least give you guys a video <laughs> to tell you what's happened, what I learned from it, and um, where I'm going to go with it from here. So everything's all done. I put everything back together and then it still wasn't working. So I've, I've mentioned before in the past, even when I test things throughout the process and they work, it doesn't always mean that they're gonna work at the end when they're complete. So everything got completely put together. And then for some reason, there became an issue with the nozzle on here. And the black piece kept coming off the nozzle or the nozzle kept getting stuck, I'm not quite sure. Obviously that's a completely different issue with the gearbox. But by that point, I was kind of fed up with this whole project. Um, you know, first off, I was a little annoyed because when I painted it, I had a reaction with some of the paints. I was using up some of my older paints. And unfortunately, what can happen is like I was using a white kind of color as a primer is you'll get this type of weird crackling, right? So that was not intentional. And I was annoyed by that. Um, and that's also what kind of led me to do the different framing with the blue pieces was to cover that up. So I was already annoyed that the paint had turned bad and didn't really look how I wanted it to look because it actually had printed nice. My new printer prints pretty nice. I don't have it, you know, dialed in exactly perfect, but definitely prints pretty good. So with that combined with all these issues now and the fact that, you know, the, the gearbox didn't even fit in the first place and I had to do this modified gearbox, I'm just going to go ahead and salvage the pieces that I can off of here and reuse them for other things. So obviously like this stock can be reused, no problem. I'll be able to sand that off without issue. I'll be able to reuse obviously the accessories. The handguard's actually pretty good. I think it actually looks pretty cool. Was able to clean it up nicely. So I'll definitely be able to use the handguard again and the grip there. And of course the outer barrel, the inner barrel, that kind of thing. So there's going to be pieces. Um, I have to go ahead and pull that apart, which I don't enjoy as much, but um, I should be able to see what's going on in there and what's wrong with that too. So really this video was just to kind of bring a conclusion so that you didn't see all these build videos and then no conclusion. What went on with this? So what I learned from it is, first of all, you must have a V2 gearbox if you're going to try to print any of these Airsoft AR-15 or M4 uh, kits, right? A V2 is the only one that's going to fit and it's still not going to fit great. So just know that and you know that that can get frustrating. You're just going to have to do a lot of sanding and hand work. So I don't know, to be honest, if it's worth attempting again, unless I get someone to send me an STL for a really cool kit that I've never seen before, something that looks really unique. And I would try that over. I probably would increase the scale like to 102 percent 103 percent so you have a little more room in there but it's not going to look off uh from the outside or anything so those that's kind of my my main learning and um that of course the same thing i've told you guys plenty of times before when you build these things and you print all these parts things don't always line up perfect and there's a lot of tweaking and in the end it still might not work out so at least i got some cool parts from this i'll be using in other blasters in the future but of course it's a little disappointing that i couldn't get the thing to go so anyway comments or questions let me know what you think of course like subscribe share my channel with your friends and participate in all the monthly giveaways thanks